people who don't know me, hi, I'm Gia Noel, and welcome to my channel. And for the people that do know me, it's your girl Gia here, and I'm back with another video. Today's video is letting booktubers choose my reads. I am super excited to do this video. I have seen both part one and part two of the videos that Sarah Crowley has done, where in both of the videos, she asked some of her favorite booktubers and book creators to pick which book she should read next from her TBR. And I thought those videos were fun, creative, and helpful and i was inspired by her to make my own video if you guys have not seen those videos that sarah caroli has done pretty much what she does is she picks one of her favorite booktubers to contact she sends that booktuber a message with a picture of two books that she wants to read from her tbr that she's in the mood to read she sends a message that booktuber responds telling her which book they want her to read then Sarah reads the books, she gives us updates on it, how she's feeling, where she's at in the book, and then when she's done reading the book, she gives us her rating and why she rated the book that way. And I thought the video was so much fun that I wanted to do it, because if this is not a trend, it needs to be, because it's really fun and also helpful because you get to spend less time deciding on what to read and more time reading. And it's also fun to see what booktuber is gonna pick which book to read. It's just, it's just a super fun creative way to get through your TBR without having to stress about what to read next. The first booktuber that I wanted to ask to be a part of this video is of course, Sarah Caroli. <laughs> of 2022 i wanted to start reading again so i went on youtube to look for some book recs and sarah was one of the first booktubers that i watched and i have been watching her ever since her videos are so good they're fun and also creative i love how she talks in her videos she seems to care about what she's doing she seems to know what she's doing the way she can literally have like 20 books in one video and still be able to give a great synopsis on all of them. The way she edits her video, she seems like a pro. And as a person, she seems like someone who is very down to earth, truly passionate about books and truly cares about her supporters. And that is why Sarah will always be one of my favorite booktubers of like all time. I'm going to now show you guys the two books that I want Sarah to choose from. So the first book is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And the second book is The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai. So these are two books that I've had on my bookshelf since last year and i would like to read one of them so i'm definitely excited to see which book sarah is going to pick so here comes the footage of me asking sarah i got my tablet here and i'm now going to be reading the message that i'm going to send to sarah before i send it and i have a screen recording going to be right here so you guys can see the message while i read it so my message is, hi, Sarah. I saw both your videos that you made where you let booktubers choose the books you read to help you get through your TBR. And I really enjoyed watching those videos and I was inspired by you to make my own video. I wanted to ask you to be a part of this video because you are one of my favorite booktubers and I truly enjoy watching your videos. If I were to send you a picture with two books, would you be able to pick which one I read next? The Inheritance Games is a book that I have heard is really good and I have seen it everywhere and The Dating Plan is a rom-com. So I'm now going to be sending the message. 
hello you guys i am now back on camera i got my first response which is from sarah 24 minutes ago so i'll be showing the screen recording on my tablet and we're going to be reading this message together okay screen recording all right she said "Ooh, i picked the inheritance games it was so fun Oh, thank you, Sarah, for responding and for being in this video. Oh my gosh, the inheritance games. If she wouldn't have picked this book, I don't think I would actually read it. So I'm glad because I really wanted to read this, but I have had this since last year and have been putting it off. So thank you, Sarah, for picking the inheritance games. Before I read this book, I'm going to explain it the best I can to people who don't know what this book is about. But The Inheritance Games is about this girl. She gets money from this guy. He's a billionaire. She doesn't know him. She's not related to him at all. And in order to get the money, she has to move into his mansion. And in his mansion are his grandsons and they are pissed off they're pretty much like um we're your grandsons and yet you gave your whole fortune to a stranger like what's up with that and i'm pretty sure she's going to team up with them and figure out why she got the money now i'm going to read the back of the book with you guys because i like to read the back of the book because the last time i read the back of the book was like last year so I'm going to read the back of the book again. Okay. It says, secret passages, elaborate riddles, billions at stake. Avery Grams has a plan for a better future. Survive high school, win a scholarship, and get out. But her luck changes in an instant when billionaire Tobias Hawthorne dies and leaves her virtually his entire fortune. The only catch? Avery must move into his sprawling mansion full of secret passages, riddles, and codes. Unfortunately for Avery, Hawthorne House is also occupied by the family that was just disinherited. This includes the four Hawthorne grandsons, dangerous, magnetic boys who grew up with every expectation that one day they would inherit billions. Hair apparent Grayson is convinced that Avery is a con woman and he's determined to take her down. But his brother Jameson views her as their grandfather's last hurrah. A twisted riddle, a puzzle to be solved. Caught in a world of wealth and privilege with dangerous around dangerous, my bad, with danger around every turn, Avery will have to play the game herself to survive. That sounds very good i'm excited to read hello everyone the time right now looking at my tablet next to me is 7 37 p.m i got the book with me so i'm now going to read because right after i told you guys what this book is about the door dasher he came with the food so then I had dinner, So, but I am now ready to actually read. I'm going to set a timer for 20 minutes and let's see how far I can get into the book in 20 minutes. Today is Monday. The time right now is 4 10 p.m. I'm here to give you guys my second update on the inheritance games. Since the last time you guys saw me, I was on chapter one. So here are the updates of the pages I made it to since the last time you guys saw me. On Friday, I made it to pages 23 and 58. Then on Saturday, I made it to pages 73 and 103 and then i made it to 114 yesterday was it yesterday or was it saturday too i can't remember but i did make it to wage 114 on either saturday or sunday and as of right now 
I am on page 163 and I'm on chapter 40. I'm going to give myself a round of applause because I have done a lot of reading since the last time you guys saw me and I'm very proud of, of where I'm at in the book. Oh my goodness. So my feelings about the book so far. Wow. Like, oh my goodness, this book is really good. Like the way that the chapters are so short, there's so much happening. And I feel like each chapter leaves me on a cliffhanger, pretty much wanting to know more. And the book is actually kind of, it's fun. But it's also like, this situation seems so like crazy and like impossible. And the main question that's in my head is like, why did Tobias Hawthorne give Avery Grahams his fortune? Why? Like, I seriously want to know. Like, can you imagine that one day you're just living your life and then one day a rich guy, he comes to your school acting arrogant, tells you that you're in his grandfather's will and then you go to the will reading with your sister and then pretty much while you're there, you find out that you got the fortune that the grandson, Grayson, was supposed to get. So then the rest of the family is like, WTF, excuse me? Like, how did this stranger get what I was supposed to get? Like, what? And honestly, like, my opinion on that is like, I do feel bad for the family because it is weird. Like, why would your grandfather give your inheritance to a complete stranger? Like, I do feel bad, but the way that they act towards Avery, I'm just like, well, the way you're acting, you guys don't deserve the inheritance. She does. The way they're acting, they're acting like they wanted him to die to get the money. Like, I'm just like, what kind of family is this? So strange. They're definitely a strange family for sure but I am really enjoying the book so far I am ready to do some more reading so I plan to read for an hour today and see how far I get <laughs> p.m. I am outside. I'm in the car once again because my goal is to finish this book and I'm here to give you guys technically this is my second update about this book since yesterday was really the first update because on Friday when I first started reading the book I didn't give you guys an update on Friday. So this is my second update about the inheritance games. I definitely read more than an hour yesterday. So now I am on page 241, chapter 58. I'm now at a part in this book that danger has happened and I'm just like, oh my goodness. Jennifer Lynn Barnes was not kidding when she said there was going to be some danger in this book. She was not kidding. And Jameson and Avery are still trying to figure out why, what's the big deal about their middle names? What is it? Like, what is the big deal about the middle names of the brothers? Why was that in the will? Why? Pretty much. What do their middle names mean? You know, like, what the purpose of them? The book is still really good. I just feel like the one thing that is stopping me from giving this a five star is the romance because I feel like to me it's like no like I don't want her with neither one of the brothers absolutely not like you guys need to well, well two of you need to graduate high school first and then the other one he's 19 and I'm like okay so Avery is what 17 then and then Grayson is 19? No. 
The other brother is just a year older than her, but still, no. These brothers have issues that they need to straighten out. And also Avery and the boys, like, you all need to figure out about this whole fortune thing first. That is more important than some romance that y'all trying to do in this book. Like, it's more important. And tell me why. One day, I'm on my bookstagram feed. I'm scrolling. And one of the girls that I follow on bookstagram was posting one star reviews of her favorite books. This book was in the post. And tell me why one of the reviews said, What in the Vampire Diaries without the vampires is this? Just no tell me why that review said that and then at first I was like what are they talking about and then I got to a part in the book where it was like the vampire diaries with the whole love triangle situation and then I was like no that was my least favorite part about the vampire diaries no this is exactly like that like no don't do this to me Jennifer Lynn Barnes don't do it to me if you guys have watched the vampire diaries you guys know the whole love triangle was Stefan, Damon, and Elena. In this book, it's Avery. Avery is Elena. Then we got Jameson and Grayson, who are the Stefan and the Damon. And then there's this other girl in the book, who's the Catherine. And I'm just like, why? It's not, to me, it's just not needed. A romance is not needed in here. But other than that, I really want to finish this book because the book is really good. It got me thinking. I'm like so engaged to like to the point I can say, oh, I'll just read like one chapter and then one more chapter. I mean, I'll stop. No, I just keep going and going because the chapters are so short and they just leave me on a cliffhanger wanting to know more. So I'm now going to read. I'm going to try to read for an hour again. Hopefully the next time I update you guys today, I'm finished with the book. So here comes the footage of me reading. p.m. and I finished the book. I am so happy. I'm going to give myself a round of applause because I finished this book in five days and usually it takes me longer than that. So that's why I gave myself a round of applause. My rating for this book is 4.9 out of five stars. It's the love triangle with Avery, Jameson, and Grayson, and her trying to like both brothers wasn't in this book, I would give it five stars. This book was really, really good. The secret passages, the riddles, them teaming up together to figure it all out. It was like a journey, an adventure, and it was really fun. So thank you, Sarah, for picking this book out you were definitely right this book was super fun so since it is my dinner time because i always eat dinner at six i am just going to work on a review for this book and tomorrow i'll be contacting messaging the next booktuber that i want in this video Good afternoon everyone. Today is Wednesday and the time right now looking at my tablet is 1.30 p.m. The next booktuber that I'm going to be asking to be a part of this video is Julie aka Books with JB. <laughs> year because I really liked her feed. I thought it was so nice and clean and aesthetic just like Serena Reed's bookstagram feed. I will place a picture here but I was always wondering why she didn't have a channel. 
and then this year she created a channel and let me tell you it doesn't even seem like she just created the channel in january at all like the way she edits the vlogs the way she talks it just seems like she's had the channel forever all her videos are great they're fun you can truly see that she is passionate about books and i just enjoy seeing that she also seems like such a sweet person and she really cares about her supporters and that is why she is one of my new favorite booktubers so i am excited to ask her to be a part of this video so the two books that i'm gonna have her choose between are the seven husbands of evelyn hugo by taylor jenkins reed and things we never got over by lucy score i already have a feeling she's going to choose this book which is fine even though it's like 500 pages so if i don't finish it while filming this video that's okay i'm now going to read you guys the message that i'm going to send to her before i send it let me get it ready and after i read the message i'm going to send it and you guys will see the picture of it over here so my message is hi julie I saw Sarah Caroli do two videos where she asked booktubers to choose the book she reads to help her get through her TBR. And I enjoyed those videos so much that I was inspired to make my own video. I wanted to ask you to be a part of this video because you're one of my new favorite booktubers and I truly enjoyed watching your videos. If I were to send you a picture with two books, would you be able to pick which one I should read next? The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Things We Never Got Over are two books that I heard were really good and I have seen everywhere. So I'm now going to be sending that message. All right, you guys, the time right now is 2.22 p.m. And I got my response from Julie and I'm now going to read it so we can read it together. She said, aw, I'm so honored. Love this trend, Angel. I definitely recommend Things We Never Got Over, one of my favorites. So she picked Things We Never Got Over. I had a feeling she was gonna pick this. Thank you so much, Julie, for responding. I'm now going to tell you guys what I know about Things We Never Got Over. And if I miss anything, I'm going to read the back of the book. And I'll place a timestamp on the screen where you guys can skip to if you don't want to hear me read the back of this book. So things we never got over, what I know about this book is that one of the main characters, her, her name is Naomi. She is a runaway bride and she has an evil twin sister. She meets up with her evil twin sister and the twin sister takes her car and her money and leaves Naomi with a niece that she didn't even know she had and I know the other main character is Knox but I don't know how they meet up so now I'm going to read the back of the book okay Knox Morgan doesn't tolerate drama especially in the form of a stranded runaway bride Naomi Witt is on the run not just from her fiance and a church full of well-wishers but from her entire life Although, if you ask her, Naomi's writing to the rescue of her estranged hot mess of a twin, Tina to knock him out. A rough around the edges town where disputes are settled the old fashioned way with fist and beer, usually in that order. Too bad for Naomi. Her evil twin hasn't changed at all. After helping herself to Naomi's car in cash, Tina leaves behind something unexpected, the niece Naomi didn't know she had. Now she's the guardian to an 11 year old going on 30 with no car, no money and no plan. There's a reason this bearded bad boy barber doesn't get involved with high maintenance women, especially not type A romantic ones. 
but Naomi's life imploded right in front of him, the least Nas can do is help her out of her jam. And just as soon as she stops getting into new trouble, he can leave her alone and get back to his quiet, solitary life. At least that's the plan. So that is the synopsis that's on the back of the book. I'm definitely excited to read this. This book is definitely thick. I mean, look at her. 550 something pages but I'm excited to get into this world because I have heard so many people really enjoy this book I mean I know I'm not finishing this in three days but why not try right so I'm going to read for an hour or two hours see how far I get and i will come back on camera today for sure to give you guys my first update on things we never got over so here comes the footage of me reading now <music> It's 8 56 a.m and today is thursday i came out the house because i wanted to take some instagram pictures for my main instagram so that's why i'm not at home i am going to give you guys my first update on things we never got over since i promised i was going to yesterday and did not so i am on page 40 yeah, I was like, oh, I'm just going to do like two hours of reading. <laughs> no, that didn't happen. I read for a little bit, had lunch, did some more reading, fell asleep while reading, then woke up and did like 30 minutes of reading. So that's why I did not make it as far as I thought I was going to yesterday. But that is okay because I'm going to be doing some more reading today. So... So far, I have met Naomi, I met Knox, Nash, and Wele. So those are the four characters that I have met so far. And the story so far is good. The plot is really good. Like, can you really imagine that? You go somewhere to meet up with your sister to give her some money. And then you end up finding out that she took your money while you were gone. Also took your car and then left a child behind as well and i was just like oh my goodness that is such a good plot but the situation is so crazy i'm just like whoa like i don't even know how to deal with that i, I don't even know what i would do like it's crazy but the fun thing that i definitely thought was funny was not saying hi to waylay and then waylay says hi to him and then he's like oh this is your niece and then Naomi's like, huh? What? Who? Niece? I'm an aunt. What? Like, <laughs> it's so funny to me. Now he's casually like, yeah, this is your niece. Can you imagine that your, your own sibling has a child who's 11 years old? So that means 11 years that you didn't even know the child existed. Like, it's just crazy. But the plot is so good. So I definitely want to read more. I can definitely see the grumpy sunshine in this book already. Like, Dox is really grumpy. I'm just like, oh my goodness. And he swears a lot. I'm like, damn. And mind you, the situation is happening in the morning. I was like, I thought you said you weren't getting involved. I thought you were just going to drive her to the police station, then take her back to her hotel, you know, like you said, and then you were going to be gone. And now that he saw Waylay, he's like, I'm staying pretty much excuse me if I burped but he's pretty much like I'm staying so I'm just like okay you didn't have to stay but you chose to stay Knox okay you guys got a long road ahead of y'all because you gotta start raising helping Naomi raise an 11 year old so let's see how that turns out but yeah book's really good so far even though I'm 40 pages in so I'm now going to do a little bit of reading and here comes the footage now.
and the time right now is 4 41 p.m i'm here to give you guys my third and final update about things we never got over so the last time you guys saw me it was april 27th and today is may 4th so i made it up to page let me see nope not that one 128 also got this cute little bookmark it's also a corner but it's shaped like a heart super cute got them on sunday anyways back on topic i got up to page 128 in the book yesterday and after that i decided to dnf the book like i do genuinely feel bad about dnfing the book but at the same time like i am in a reading slump now i wasn't originally in a reading slump when i started reading this but after april 27th i feel like that was when the reading slump began because like two days i didn't read and that was my sign right there that i should have dnf the book sooner and yesterday i you know i tried i got to like what is it chapter 12 and i tried to finish the chapter but i just couldn't like i know that i'm in a slump and I de genuinely do feel bad about not finishing the book because this is the book that Julie picked for me. I felt so bad that I literally texted her before filming today to let her know that I didn't finish the book and also when this video was coming out. So, yeah. So, I'm definitely in a reading slump. And I feel like two of the reasons why are definitely because, number one, I just finished Inheritance Games the day before. So I probably shouldn't have picked up another book so soon. Then on top of that, this book is 500 something pages. And now you guys can see, but she thick, really. She a big book. And I have never read a book with 500 pages or more than 500 pages before. And I thought I was ready to get into this book, but I wasn't. And then now that I think about it, I don't even think I've ever read a book that was 400 pages before so yeah if you guys have any tips on how to get out of a reading slump let me know in the comments before i end this whole video off and give you guys a wrap up i am going to just talk to you guys a little bit about how i feel about where i got up to yesterday in the book so good things are happening but then there's some not good things that are happening like okay naomi got a job that's great but then she found out what happened to her car that wasn't good <laughs> you know and then she finds out who her boss is and that wasn't good but she's actually doing good at her job so that's a positive i i don't know what it is like i'm not feeling not 100 percent, but i have a feeling like this is a book that there's definitely going to be character development but the character development is slow yeah i guess it's, it's, it's definitely slow the good things that i can say about this book because i do not hate this book at all i don't hate it i'm just not 100 percent feeling it and i think the reading slump is causing that too but I love the setting in this book, love the small town vibes, especially the library in this book. If you know, you know, I would love to go to the library and knock them out, Virginia. I would love to meet Salone. She seems like a genuinely nice person and she cares about her library 100% and she knows what she's doing. I would love to get a coffee and go to that library to read just like the whole setting in this book is really good like naomi i do actually like naomi i like that she is willing to take her niece in like i love that because the girl really needs somebody she truly does like waylay needs an adult 
who cares about her. And Naomi is definitely the right person. But you can also see that Knox, he's like a father to Lele. And I like that as well. So I feel like there is goodness in him. And I like seeing him interact with Wele. Now I'm going to give you guys a wrap up. So the Inheritance Games, I rated it 4.9 out of 5 stars. If it wasn't for the romance, I would have given it 5 stars. And things we never got over, made it up to page 128. And I DNF'd it. Yeah. But I love the setting in this book. Like I said about the library, I seriously would love to go to that library. I seriously would and just have coffee and read a good book like that is a vibe i would love to go to knock them out virginia for real thank you so much sarah and julie for being a part of this video you both are two amazing booktubers who are just great at what you do i get excited anytime you guys upload you guys are truly passionate about books which makes me want to be more passionate about books you guys are just such like genuinely amazing people and you just deserve all the love and hype and support that you guys get. So thank you so much for being a part of this video. Before I end this, I just wanted to let you all know that I will be making a part two because even though I didn't finish both books, this video was still fun to make. So I will be making a part two of this video in July. And Julie, be ready because in July, I will be sending you a message to be a part of the part two because I really do want to finish a book that you pick for me. I'm now going to be ending this video off like I end all my videos with saying thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to be notified the next time I post, turn on post notifications. If you want to follow me on any of my social media platforms, the links will be in the description below. Also, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!